Hi everyone. Okay, well Storm Ashley has rolled on through and we had a couple of trees down but nothing too serious and so now it's time to pick the grapes as I promised to do uh, a couple of days ago. Well, I must say before I do this, I am bitterly disappointed in this year's crop. We had unbelievably bad weather more or less all through the summer. Um, spring didn't start off great and autumn has just been dreadful and so we've basically written off our whole Bacchus crop. Um, I'll pick a few but really there's nothing much to uh, write home about and I was hoping that the Orion grapes grapes would be our saving grace but even they have succumbed to mildew in the last few weeks even though they were showing such great potential um, just not that many uh, many we, about a month ago they were looking absolutely fantastic but no nope, they've succumbed as well I'll spin you around so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about these are the Orion grapes and some of them don't look too bad the, these bunches will be able to pick uh, without any uh, problems at all but other ones which are further down the row have got clear signs of rot in them and there's not much I can do to rescue those ones at all and uh, these ones are particularly bad there's no point picking anything there and these are the Orion grapes so it's been dreadful what can I say it's one of those things. It's just farming in the UK, unfortunately. Uh, we just don't have the climate of some countries and uh, yeah, this is the result of it. I take some solace, it's not a great deal of solace, but I take some solace in that uh, several of you have written to me uh, in the YouTube comments and things like that to say that um, you two have also had real problems this year with mold and mildew and lost entire crops. I dare say there's some vineyards that have done really well, but uh, unfortunately we haven't. So. There we go. Um, I'm going to just pick a, a few and we'll go through the picking and making wine from the small harvest which we're going to get from these and I'll take you through that process as well. Okay, bear with me. Well, it gets dark quite early now in the UK and the clocks change this weekend, which makes it darker even sooner. Anyway, we've got a few white grapes to press here, rather disappointingly few, so I'll probably just go through the motions of uh, crushing them and then pressing them. And if you've not already seen the video on how we've um, using the press and the crusher, have a look at the video um, which I'll put on the top here. Uh, it goes into a lot more detail about the uh, time we pressed the red grapes just uh, a few weeks ago. Anyway, let's get on with this one be doing this inside my workshop so if it sounds a little bit echoey please forgive me but it's just a much uh, sort of warmer nicer environment to do it in rather than outside but uh, yeah so all I've got really is my um, trusty old um, destemmer which uh, I'll just spin you around so I can show you you will have seen this in previous videos I'm sure but uh, essentially just an auger that feeds all the grapes into the two counter rotating drums there uh, that crushes them and then they fall through into the uh, container below and uh, all the stems hopefully um, gets passed out through the uh, back of the machine here and that's quite a sort of handy little um, thing to do rather than sort of trying to destem them all by hand. So these grapes are the Orion grapes that we picked a little bit earlier and uh, we'll just put those into the machine and see how we get on with those. Okay, well, apologies for the rather harsh lighting that I've got outside here, but once again, we're going to be using the hydropress, which worked really well for us just a few weeks ago when we did the red grapes. Now, one or two of you have said that uh, when I was um, putting the water into the uh, balloon inside here, I may have just put a too high a pressure inside. I was uh, doing it up to about three and a half bar, and that might have just over extracted what was in the red grapes, and I may get a little bit more tannin and things like that coming into the, uh, the juice there. But um, the white grapes, maybe have a little bit less tannin in the skin so perhaps I can afford to go up to uh, three three and a half bar uh, it's all a bit of an experiment really isn't it so we're just going to put the uh, the crushed grapes which we've just done in here we'll have a little bit of free flow not much to be honest and then we'll turn the water on and see if we can get a little bit more extraction from them
What I'm doing at the moment is just taking out some of the volume in the press here by filling the balloon up with a little bit of water just so that it swells a bit and I've just then got less room around the edges uh, because I really want the grapes to come right up to the uh, top here when this balloon really applies pressure to the sides of the wall. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm letting a little bit of air out the, uh, the top here um, so that the whole balloon is filled with water. So that's essentially what I'm doing now and you can see actually if I just spin you around this balloon really is filling up quite nicely. Okay we've got all the grapes in there so I'm just going to put the lid on the top and then turn on the water to see if we can start pressing it. Okay, well that's the pressing done and at least we've got a carboy out of it all and um, well at least we can do something with it. So before I do anything at all I've got to test the specific gravity of it and it's coming out at 1.065, a little bit on the low side but I always thought I was going to struggle because uh, when I was testing it with the refractometer throughout the growing season it just seemed to plateau off around about, um, around about 16 to 18 bricks and that's a little bit too low for white wine. So. I'm going to either add some sugar or just leave it and just be happy with a slightly lower alcoholic wine. Um, that might be uh, okay, to be honest. So anyway, that's okay. I've got to put that in my book just so I've got a record of that. And the next thing I've got to do is add some potassium metabisulfate just to stabilize the, the must before we pitch the yeast, which I'll probably do in about 24 hours time. So to add the metabisulfate, I'm going to add round about one gram per 10 litres of must. So um, that's what I'm going to measure out now with my little fine scales. And then I'm going to put it to bed for tonight. Okay, so we've added the potassium metabisulfate now. That's going to be in there for about 24 hours just to kill off the bacteria and wild yeasts and molds before I pitch the yeast. In the meantime, I've just got to tidy up um, the press and everything behind me here, and I shall catch you in the morning. Nothing's going to go to waste this year. I'm going to actually be using these um, grape skins and uh, pips and all that kind of stuff, and I'm going to make some grappa with it. I've never done it before, so it'll be quite fun trying. So that will be for a, a future video, I think. Okay, it's 24 hours later now and I'm going to be pitching the yeast now. But before I do that, I'm just going to test how much free sulphite I've got in my juice uh, before I pitch the yeast. Um, we added it uh, yesterday at a, or the potassium metabisulfate yesterday, which should have given us around about 60 parts per million. And um, that should have been okay to get rid of the uh, bacteria and molds. And it'll be interesting to see exactly how much free sulphite I've got left. Left. So um, what I've got is my little um, sulphite for quick test. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so here's my little chemistry set here from Sulfur Quick. We can, in various sequences of these chemicals, measure the total sulfite as well as the free sulfite. Now, it's the free sulfite that really does the business in terms of uh, sterilizing things and getting rid of bacteria and molds and things like that. And the little titration syringe here, which I'll be using in a second, can give us a fairly accurate uh, measure of these um, two levels. Now, I quite like to do this before I pitch the yeast. A too high a sulfite level at this stage might just actually prevent the yeast from starting so I quite like to give a uh, give myself an idea as to whether we stand a good chance for the yeast starting. Okay first things first we need five millilitres of grape juice so I'm just going to put that in there that should bring us up to the line which is on the little test tube there. Okay, fortunately for me, there are some really simple instructions which I'm going to follow and uh, I'll take you through them now. First off we need two drops from bottle number one. and give it a shake. Next we take two drops from bottle number two and give that a shake too. Bottle number three and suck up 10 millilitres. Then we just add millilitre by millilitre into the solution and we should see the solution turn a dark sort of blue. Now when it stays dark blue, that's when we read the level off the titration syringe. That. Fantastic. Just going to read that off now, and we've got um, it's, we've used three millilitres, which means that the free sulphite in our grape juice is round about 
30 parts per million. And we started off with 60 parts per million, which is about right. In previous um, years, I've found that at this stage, half of our sulfite is now bound and um, half of it is still free. So that works out about right. I, perhaps if I was going to do it a little bit more accurately, I perhaps would have found that it's probably around about 25 parts per million. But um, anything under 50, I'm probably okay with the yeast that I'm using. Now, if you haven't come across this site already, then I thoroughly recommend it. It's called winebusiness.com, super site, because it's got a whole massive load of wine calculators, uh, would you believe? So if you want to have any sort of conversion tables, um, how much uh, SO2 to add, that's potassium or sodium metabisulfate, um, fermentation, this is yeast quantities, how much sugar you should be adding, how much water you should be adding if need be, um, acid additions, uh, oak additions and finings, fortification, wine blending and cost calculators, all that type of thing. It's absolutely super. You just plug in your numbers and it will give you a pretty good idea um, as to whatever you want to find out really. So the first thing I used it for was how much alcohol I should be expecting given the bricks level that I was starting off with um, and it confirmed actually the hydrometer reading so that was really good. Um, the other really good thing about it is it gives you an idea of how much yeast to pitch and that's obviously relevant for me now. Now it does say on my yeast packet how much yeast I should add so that's uh, that's really handy but you might not have that figure. Um, this one here is uh, 20 to 30 grams per hectolitre so that's the rate that I'm going to be adding. Uh, I don't think that's probably abnormal uh, for any type of yeast to be honest so if you don't really know how much to um, to add then perhaps go with 20 to 30 grams per hectolitre so that's what I'm going to be using and uh, just um, as reference I'm using the uh, Lauvin 71B yeast um, that's worked quite well for me in the past when we've had um, the Bacchus grapes um, in the last year or two uh, that gave it a really nice um, alcoholic strength and flavour and uh, we'll see how we get on with the Orion grapes. So I did decide to rack the juice uh, before I added the yeast and this is the sediment that's um, been left behind. Uh, it doesn't add anything to the flavour, it's just sort of um, you know rubbish really from when we uh, pressed the grapes and I've moved it into a nice fresh clean carboy uh, which has been sterilised and everything and I've pitched the yeast into that now. So I'm going to move this carboy or demijohn into a slightly warmer area just to get the yeast started. Once I can see bubbles going through the airlock, I'll move it back into a slightly cooler area for it to ferment over the next couple of weeks or so. There's no getting away from it. 2024 has been a particularly poor year for us. In fact, it's nothing short of a disaster really. We've had uh, very, very low yields um, from everything really. Uh, not that surprising from the Orion and Rondo grapes because they're only two years old. We shouldn't really expect to get anything off those really. Uh, but the Bacchus ones in particular were really disappointing. I didn't get anything really off those ones at all. And so it makes me question whether we should stick with the Bacchus grapes or whether we should uh, replant. And the Orion and Rondo grapes are from a variety called, well, group together called peewee varieties. I'll put on the screen exactly what that's short for, but essentially they're disease resistant. Um, the Bacchus on the other hand isn't, and uh, that's why uh, they have really, really suffered this year. And uh, I'm just wondering whether I should maybe take up some of the Bacchus, if not all of them eventually, and replace them with something else uh, from the peewee range. Um, if you've got any suggestions, then please let me know. Um, you may have experience with uh, other varieties which are more uh, disease resistant or mold resistant and uh, I'd love to know because um, yeah you put in a lot of hard work throughout the year and it's very disappointing when uh, you know all your hard work goes to waste really so anyway I'm trying not to get too despondent about it uh, 2025 is always another year where we can try something anyway the uh, red grapes uh, that we got off are now going through their malolactic uh, fermentation and uh, they're doing really well uh, the Orion, the very, very small Orion crop that we got off the other day, uh, that as you've seen in this video, has uh, been picked, crushed, and now fermenting, hopefully. So uh, I'll catch you in the next video. A huge thank you to my patrons uh, who get a lot more of these sort of background um, videos and uh, what else, uh, well, fact sheets and things like that. So perhaps I'll see you over there, but a huge thank you to them as well. Thanks for watching this far in the video. I'll catch you later. Till the next one. Bye for now.